Philippians chapter 3, we're going to read verse 14. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We want to use this today with the help of the Lord. We want to preach about staying on target. Yes. Thank God we can stay on target. What's the goal? Hmm? Who do we to look to? We're to look to Jesus. And heaven is our goal, brother and sister. Amen. 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 So let's go ahead and look to him right now in prayer. We're going to ask his blessing not only upon the message, each one here today, but we want to pray for these that are sick. Reverend Cope, we're serving you pray. Wonderful Father, again we come before you in that name that is above every name, name of Jesus. Father, again we ask you to help Pastor Pope as he ministers your word. God, keep your hand upon this service, accomplish your eternal purposes. You, and Father, we pray for the these individuals. We pray for Sister Poe. Continue to undertake for our sister, Lord. Amen. And Father, we pray for Wanda that you'll under continue to keep your hand upon oh, Wanda Jesus. and Devin, Lord, and help them. Father, we pray for Sally that you'll undertake for Sally. Help her physically, Lord, and God, keep your hand upon them. Father, we also pray for Jericho that you'll continue to be with her, Lord. Mm -hmm. And Father, we pray for the Collins family as they, they travel back. God, give them traveling grace and mercy. Amen. 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 Thank God, brother and sister. You know, the Lord not only hears, but we have what we ask for. Yes. We have those petitions that we ask of him, brother and sister. Mm -hmm. God answers our prayer. He hears. He answers. He meets the needs. As we began to share, exhorting a little bit before we read our Bibles, uh, setting, we don't have to worry or wonder if we are looking to the, the right one. Amen. And Jesus is the right one. Amen. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the one that started it. It wasn't just some haphazard thing that happened in our life. We just, oh, by the way, I got saved. No, God had a plan. Amen. And God orchestrated things in our life. God is the one who made a way for us to be saved. Amen. Not only by dying upon the cross so that salvation would be made available to all of mankind, but individually, God is the one that began to orchestrate things in our individual lives to bring us to a place to save us, Amen. for us to hear the gospel. And that's an amazing thing of all of the billions of the pe people upon the face of the earth. God's not willing that any should perish. Right. He endeavors to make a way for everyone to be able to hear. And, you know, we understand that people have to respond to God correctly. But thank God there were people who did. Yes. In our case, there were people who were willing to preach the gospel to us and to let us know, okay, that maybe we were off target. Right. We were aiming at the wrong thing. Okay, we were yes. looking to the wrong things, and therefore, we never realized the goal in our life. Maybe we were looking for love. Maybe we were looking for peace and joy. And we never found it because we were looking in the wrong direction. Yeah. But thank God God began to direct our lives towards Jesus. Amen? Mm -hmm. And began to help us to focus on him and, and bring us to a place, yeah. brother and sister, where we turned away from our sin. And we allowed him to come into our hearts and into our lives and save us. And along with his salvation, we had that joy, that love, and that peace that we were looking for. Amen? Amen. Finally hit the bullseye. Yeah. Finally hit the target, brother and sister. Okay? Amen. That speaker's kind of loud on their sister, right? Oh, no. I, there's a restroom back there. Okay. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <We're sorry. laughs> We finally hit the target, brother and sister. We finally hit, uh, found out what it was that we really needed in our lives. And, and uh, the same God that saved you and I and made a way for us and orchestrated things for us, he wants to do it for other people. Amen. It's not something that we are to keep to ourselves, brother and sister, but we are to help other people to find what it is, that who it is that really that they are looking for in their lives. I remember being in the military, and I grew up, you know, uh, in my family, we were 
we would go hunting and we would go fishing and things like that. So I was already familiar with rifles and things. Okay, and and uh, but you join the military and they send you to this basic training and they teach you some very basic things. Now there's some things that you have to unlearn. Yeah. Okay, I was used to shooting with weapons with scopes on them and things like that. Okay, it's different. They didn't have buffer springs in them. Some of you may know what I'm talking about. Okay, but anyway, I was used to shooting like that. And I got in the military and it's a totally different uh, weapon and totally different uh, uh, way that it worked. It didn't have much recoil. Had a totally didn't have a scope on it. Had different sights. Well, they had to train me to shoot that weapon. They had to train me to get the right sight picture, if you will, to get get myself on target. Mm -hmm. And there were some things that I had to unlearn. Yeah. I had to unlearn some things from my past. And you know, there's some things, brother and sister, that we need to forget. Yeah. There are some things that we need to leave behind us, brother and sister. Okay, yeah. Some things that we need to leave in the past and we need to look to the target of the goal that God has set before us. Amen. You know, it's kind of a funny story. It goes back the other way. I learned how to shoot a military rifle. I got out, well, went home, went home to visit my family on leave. And my brother-in-law took me to the range. We went to the range. He bought a new rifle with a new scope. And we were out there. And I was trying to shoot like I had an M16 in my hand. And I put my face right up on that scope and shot that rifle. And that scope hit me right between the eyes. And I looked at my brother-in-law, and he started laughing. And all of a sudden, I felt all this wet stuff on my face. What's going on? I cut a big gash in my forehead. Okay, because oh I didn't, I didn't, I didn't uh, realize I'm not there. I'm here now. This is different. I've got to make some adjustments. You know, that's life is that way, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, brother and sister, we we got to make some adjustments sometimes, brother and sister. We got to make some changes. We got to realize the situation that we are in, but we still need to keep our eyes on the goal and on the target. Because regardless of what we are shooting with, whether it's a rifle, whether it's a pistol, whether it's a bow and arrow, the target does not change, brother and sister. We still want to focus on the bullseye, and we still want to hit the target. Well, Jesus is the goal. Heaven is the goal. Brother and sister, we are to look unto him. Okay, we, he is the author and the finisher of our faith. I don't want to have the attitude, oh, well, whatever comes, comes. You know, we're not, we're not singing that old song, que sera, sera, what will be, will be. No, this is not that way, brother and sister. We're not just floating around through life in some old movie. We're living real life right now with Jesus. I want to go where God wants me to go. I want to do what God wants me to do. I want to keep my eyes on the goal. Brother and sister, where if we're just wandering aimlessly, then we're going to end up, brother and sister, not on the goal. We're going to be off target. We're going to be uh, way off somewhere. But thank God if we find ourselves off a target, if we find ourselves missing the mark, thank God we can make an adjustment in our lives. Wait a minute, I'm trying to hit that bullseye, but I'm, I'm, there's dirt flying up way over here. Something's off. Let me get this thing on target. Let me get my focus where it needs to be. Amen. Where God wants it to be. And when we do, brother and sister, we can hit the mark. Amen? Amen. Thank God. Brother and sister, we have a goal, don't we? We have, we have a goal. And I like what uh, what uh, a meme that I saw. It was a picture of a lion, and he was out uh, in in the in the bush, and he was hunting. And the and the caption under the, the the picture of this lion said, "I'm not following a dream. I'm hunting a goal. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm not just floating around here. Oh, I hope I make it to heaven. Right. No, I'm hunting a goal. Amen. There's a purpose for all of this. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen." There's a reason that you fight the battles that you fight. There's a reason that you bring yourself into subjection unto Almighty God. There's a reason that you obey the Word of God. Amen. Can I get a witness today? Amen. Amen. Brother, sister, that reason is we are we are following a 
goal. We are hunting a goal, brother and sister. I'm not just aimlessly wandering. I want to make it to heaven. We want to make it there. Not only that, you know, we, we care about other people. We want them to go. Amen. We were last night at Arthur's house. They had a little memorial get together. Uh, his wife passed away. It'd be a year. Tuesday, the 23rd of April. Okay, we were there. We were sharing things with them uh, from Scripture and just some personal things. And you know, he, he has uh, three children and a grandson that he raised as a child, him and his wife, Gloria. Many of you know, you, you knew, you know Gloria, you knew Gloria. Okay, and we were talking to them. And, and I let, the, I, around the same time, uh, Gloria died on the 23rd of April. My mother died on the 25th of April. My dad died on the 10th of May. And then we had some neighbors, some Filipino neighbors. The dad died and the son died the next day, right all in the same time period. So in that time period, there was five people yeah. that died that we knew, okay? Uh, my friends that lived right across the parking lot from me, uh, Filipino family, then Gloria, then my mom, and then my dad. Brother and sister, we can relate. We were yeah. explaining to them, we, we understand your hurt. Yeah. We understand your loss. But there's something that you've got to realize, okay? Gloria had a goal. She came to church, and she asked me point blank more than once. She said, what do I need to do to be right with God? I want to be right with God. Not only did we pray with her here, we prayed with her. Brother and Sister Collins were with us. We prayed with her at her house. We had, she asked the Lord to come into her life and into her heart and to save her. She, brother and sister, found out what she needed to do to get on target, and she got on target. Amen. And as we were sharing with them last night, you know, we remember these people. We remember them. Yeah. We remember them. Uh, I remember my mom and dad, and I miss my mom and dad. I think about them. I said, man, I wish they were here. Then you have to really stop and think. No, I don't. Because <laughs> yeah. huh? they got saved. Yes. They're in heaven. You know, I remember them being healthy, and I remember them being involved. I remember my dad giving me advice and telling me things. Things like, you know, good dad, don't get yourself in debt. If you can't buy it, sound like Pastor Davis. If you can't pay cash for it, don't buy it. He'd, he'd tell me, you know, my house is paid for, my car is paid for, we don't owe nobody nothing. We don't even have a credit card. They are old school from back in the day. They were raised during the 30s and, and uh, brought up uh, during that time. Still okay. good. Still works. Still, still good teaching. Amen? Yes. Owe no man anything but to love one another. Amen. Okay? Thank God for that. Anyway, uh, I think about him and we miss him. And, and I was telling the children, uh, glorious children, uh, and, and her grandson, you know, I, I understand what you feel. You miss them. You think about them. But when you think about her, you think about her being healthy. And you think about her being involved. And you think about how she was able to be a positive influence in your life. But that's not the way that she was before she died. And that's not the way that my parents were before they died. They were sickly. They were laying in, in a bed. They couldn't even do anything for themselves. And that's the way that she was. We didn't want, we prayed and we said, God, heal them. God, raise them up. God, make them whole. Well, God did heal them. Amen. And God did make them whole. Yeah. Not by leaving them here, brother and sister, oh. but by taking them home. Yes. Taking them home. They're not sick anymore. Amen. Are you here? Yes. There's no more pain. All the tears have been wiped away. Yes. There's no more death. Brother and sister, you and I are headed to the same place. There's no sorrow there. Amen. Amen. There ain't nobody in heaven that's going to do you wrong, my Amen. friend. Uh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Brother and sister, that is our goal. Okay? God did, God did heal my parents. He took them to heaven. God did heal Gloria. He took her to heaven. Okay? We, 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 have, we suffer loss and we we, uh, uh, you know, sorrow. I want to read to you what I read to them yesterday. We have a hope. You know, we have an older congregation here for the most part. You know, not everybody's 30 like Reverend Coker. Okay? <laughs> you don't have to fret. You don't have to be afraid. Okay? Listen to this. This poem is called God's Garden. Mm. God looked around the garden and found an empty space. And he looked down on earth and he saw your tired face. He put his arms around you and lifted you to rest. 
God's garden must be beautiful, for he only takes the best. He knew that you were weary. He knew you were in pain. He knew that you would never be well on earth again. He saw the roads were getting rough and the hills were hard to climb. So he closed your weary eyelids and whispered, peace be thine. You know, we say, we, you hear people say when somebody passes, rest in peace. But there are some people, brother and sister, that got their eyes on the target. That they, they absolutely got their eyes on the goal. And his name is Jesus. And they left this life. And they are resting in peace today. Amen. And that's the hope that we have, church. We have a hope in Jesus. You know what? When you begin to think about life in the light of eternity, in the light of the fact that one of these days I'm going to be the one that they're uh, performing a funeral for, that they're eulogizing, there's a lot of things in this world that just don't matter. Right. Amen. It don't matter. I'm going to heaven. Yeah. Who cares what somebody thinks about you? Amen. You know, there's a lot of things in life that are distractions. They get our eyes off the goal. They distract us from the target. But we can read about the Apostle Paul. What did he say? He said, I count it all dung that I may win Christ, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. He said, I press toward that mark for the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He went on, brother, sister, and he wrote to us in the book of Ephesians chapter 5. And he tells you and I to walk circumspectly, that we're to look around. We're to watch what we are doing. Amen. Okay, why? No, we're not to walk as fools, but as wise. We're to redeem the time because the, day, the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Brothers and sisters, thank God we can, we can prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Amen, yes. Come on now. Amen. You know, I know that God doesn't want me to live in sin. That's I know right. that God wasn't, doesn't want me to get wrapped up in this world. Right. I know right. God doesn't want me to be distracted by the entertainments and the, the, the things that this world has to offer. I need to keep my eyes on Jesus. Yes. God wants him to be the centerpiece of my life. Amen. And he can be. He can be, brother and sister. We can, we can look to him. You know, we can, we can go on here in chapter 5 of Ephesians, verse 19. Listen to what he says. You know, people, well, I'm not emotional. We need to get emotional. <laughs> All right. We sir. get emotional about other things. Yeah. We can be, we can absolutely let God stir our hearts. Yeah. You know, God gave us the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Well, didn't Paul write to Timothy and he tells him to stir up the gift that is in you? Yeah. You're in a battle, Timothy. You got all this coming against you. God's not giving you a spirit of fear, but a power and a love and of a sound mind. Amen. Stir up the gift that is in you. Stir up that Holy Ghost. Amen. That Holy Ghost is going to burn out the chaff. All the things that don't matter. All the things that are a distraction. It's going to burn those things out. And it's going to get your focus right. Amen. All right. Get you back on target. Oh, thank God for conference. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank, you, oh, thank God for conference, brother and oh, sister. Yes. Oh. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, God, let me look at the bullseye. Yes. God, let me get back on target. Amen. I know what you called me to do. I know why you have me in this world, Jesus. Amen. He's got us here to be a witness. Amen. Everywhere you go, you're a witness, my friend. All right. The grocery store, the car wash, gas station, gas station, the park. We deliberately go to the park to walk around and talk to people. Yes, sir. And invite them to church. Amen. Okay, God doesn't want us sitting around and just let the world die and go to hell. Right. We have a mission. Come on now. We are men and women with a mission, brother and sister. That's to be a witness for the Lord. Man, we can pick up the phone. They were talking about Gloria. They said she was always talking to somebody. <laughs> she didn't practice what she told them. She didn't let them talk on the phone at the dinner table. But she did. <laughs> He's talking to people. You know, huh? We can we can use that device that we have for something positive. 
Instead of reading a bunch of gossip and watching nonsense on social media, we can talk to somebody about the Lord Jesus Christ. We can encourage somebody in the Lord. And we're not trying to get on anybody's case. We love you. God loves you. We appreciate everything that you do. Okay, brother and sister, but we need to keep on target. We need to keep our eyes on the goal. We need to keep our eyes on the prize, brother and sister. Jesus is our goal. His work is our goal, brother and sister. He, he is the one that has called us out of darkness. He is the one that has called us into his light. Not to hide that light under a bushel basket, brother and sister, but oh, let that thing shine. Let it shine in this world. Amen. Let it shine Amen. in other people, brother and sister, because Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus wasn't just aimlessly wandering around, spouting out good sayings. Mm -hmm. Brother and sister, he had a mission. He had a goal. He was seeking those that were lost. He came to people. Yeah. He came to Peter and Andrew and said, follow me, yeah. and I'm going to make you fishers of men. He came to Jer, to John and James, and told them the same thing, brother and sister. Yeah. Follow me. We can be like them. We can leave the nets of the world. We can follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God, brother and sister. It, it came to pass, brother and sister, that, that Jesus, it was time for him to be received up. What did he do? He set his face steadfastly to go to Jerusalem. He didn't, he didn't vacillate, brother and sister. Yes, he had to pray just like you and I have to pray. But just as he brought his flesh into subjection and said, not my will, but thy will be done, you and I can bring our flesh into subjection. Yeah. 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 Not my will, but thy will be done. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Brother and sister, we need to keep on target. We are on the Lord's side. Listen, I was telling you about Paul writing to Timothy. Listen to what he told him. Okay, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Beginning in verse 1, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard among, of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, being a good soldier, part of it, being a good soldier, you can't even graduate from basic training. You got to be able to pass a common knowledge test, common skills tasks, they call it. You got to be able to pass a PT test. You got to be physically fit. And you got to be able to keep on target. All right. And pass your marksmanship with your rifle. Wow. Come on, good soldiers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus. Let's stay on target. Mm -hmm. Brother and sister, we can endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangle himself with the affairs of this life, they may, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Well, you know what? We used to sing that song. We're in the army of the Lord, brother and sister. Amen. I enlisted when I got saved. Here I am, Jesus, sign me up. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Come on now. Brother and sister, we... You need to keep our eyes. I'm getting ready to close, sister, right? We need to keep our eyes on eternity. We think about this life. We talked about those that have gone before us and those that have already left this life, brother and sister. Yes, they may have lived 80-something years, 70-something years, but what is that in the light of eternity? It is nothing, brother and sister. It is nothing but a drop in the ocean. Brother and sister, we have a far exceeding great uh, weight for you, uh, glory for you and I that's waiting on us, brother and sister, it's far greater than anything that we've ever faced in this life. Yes. It's going to be worth it all. Yes. yes. When we stand in the presence of Jesus. Yes. You know, we're in his presence today because he is in us. Amen. He is with us. Yes. Brother and sister, and we're going to look to him in prayer. Keep your eyes on the target. Keep your eyes on the prize. This afternoon, as we bow our heads and we close our eyes in reverence to the Lord, the sister begins to play and sing. We pray. God, help us. Not to turn to the left or the right, but to look right on. 
looking unto you, the author, the finisher of our faith. God bless this time of prayer.